This week, the UFC's antitrust lawsuit has been declined by a judge. The UFC did put out a settlement offer to the fighters of $335 million, and the fighters accepted it, but the judge has overruled, and it's going to court. So what does this mean? We're going to break it down in a simple format. What is the antitrust lawsuit and just the things that you need to know and not all the absolute complexities of the case. So we're going to start with what is the antitrust lawsuits. So here's to the fighters, the fans on the game. Here's to the blood, sweat and tears on the fame. And here's to as in key, you're ready to go on the brutally honest MMA show. So the antitrust lawsuit, it's where fighters have alleged that the UFC have used illegal powers to negotiate contracts. And so what this meant for the fighters is that fighters didn't get the true value of what they were worth when negotiating contracts. And the UFC used cutthroat tactics to actually get fighters to re-sign or sign uh, to the company by undervaluing, um, you know, higher fighters in the rankings, champions. They would leak information to the press um, of what they were, they, they were getting in the contracts, which would be untrue uh, because the UFC stopped and forbidden fighters discussing fighter contracts. So then the UFC could then use the media to manipulate uh, when trying to re-sign fighters saying like, oh, well, we're not going to give you this much because uh, John Jones isn't making that much or uh, GSP is not making that much. So why would we even give you close to what they're getting? It was a tactic that they used. And in the case of Nate Diaz, um, Nate Diaz was one of those affected in the case Um the, the messages were leaked to show the, the kind of tactics that they used to get him to resign. So um, they lowballed him on purpose uh, to sort of get him to resign. And they even used tactics by saying that, listen, we're going to make you fight out the, the rest of your contract on the prelims unless you resign. Uh, so one of the messages reads, uh, do we let Strike Force pay him 48,000, 48, uh, 48, 48 show and win? Or, or do we give them what they want? Silver asked White and Fatita. He was making 24-24. I offered 27-27, 30-30, 33-33, 36-36. And then this is the part that's interesting. I lowballed them on purpose. The first offer knowing they would turn it down. How about I come back with 29, 32, 35, 38. If they turn it down, I put him in a prelim against a really tough guy for his last fight. What is that? Like, that is like saying, basically, if you're not going to re-sign with our company, we'll uh, downgrade your status, your value, your worth, we'll, we'll give you the hardest fight on the prelim, and off you go to strike force. So they were using these kinds of really tough negotiating, uh, negotiation contract, uh, negotiation tactics, sorry, to actually get fighters, uh, fighters to re-sign. In the end, uh, Diaz re-signed for 30-30 even though that Strike Force were offering 4848. Now, um, there was other things that came up in that uh, in, in in the leaked messages. Some of the messages were deleted by Dana White and we'll never know what they said. Um here's another exchange between uh, some of these messages. So after the UFC used one of the controversial contract clauses to prevent former Strike Force champion Gilbert Melendez from moving to Bellator Text messages obtained from the lawsuit show Dana White congratulating Fatita for making a fucking cutthroat nasty business move. Um, so, uh, bro, you know what? I love you to fucking death. Uh, but what you pulled off this week with Melendez and other dude is fucking badass. Fucking cutthroat nasty business like you see in the movies, Dana White wrote in a text. We've got to keep taking these, these fuckers oxygen till they tap out. We have sacrificed too much to let anyone get traction now. I agree, you're 100% correct, and I love it. Dana White responded. So the, the negotiation tactics that they did use were pretty ruthless. How am I even meant to ride this? Don't be so ungrateful. At least give it a try. The UFC decided to settle the case at 335 million, and the fighters in the antitrust lawsuit did accept it. Um, but what that meant is... Um, you know, benefits for fighters as a, as a, as a whole, you know, like um, Alfcare, 
um, long-term healthcare when they're done fighting and stuff like that and fair fair contracts. Um, that that we won't we won't see it if they settle. Like there's a possibility that if it goes to court, that we'll get some fighters will get extra benefits. You know, it'll change the way UFC uh, deliver contracts and how fighters can negotiate and speak to other promotions. So there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. And what happened is that the fighters accepted because I think they thought they wouldn't get any better than that. They wouldn't get any better. It was worth, the the, the antitrust lawsuit is actually worth over 1 billion. Uh, the judge, for whatever reason, has decided to overrule it, even though both parties did accept. So it is going to court. And I think that will go to court in October. Uh, the UFC have released a statement on this um, saying, we obviously disagree with the ruling and believe it disregards the expertise of counsel from both sides as well as that of accomplished and expert mediator, all of whom have decades of experience in antitrust case law. Uh, it prevents the athletes from receiving what they have argued is in their best interest and unwinds an extensively negotiated negotiated settlement. Um, so I think the, US, the, the fighters accepted based on the fact that, that, you know, they were going to get something out of it rather than nothing. Uh, but the judge it, it possibly thinks the fighters could get more. I'm guessing the the legal legal legality of it all is going to come into play. Could Dana White go to prison? Well, this is the question. What happens next? Uh, well, the could what what's going to happen most likely is Dana White's got the money. The UFC has got the money to settle this out of court. So there's there's a possibility they'll. Um, negotiate again and put out another settlement deal and see if the, the the fighters are definitely going to accept it because it's going to be more and but it's whether the judge in the case is going to to, to allow that settlement to go go ahead or whether it'll go go ultimately go to trial now if it goes to trial the th this is where things get more interesting because it could change future contracts how the UFC put them out what's included uh, long-term health care. There's a lot of things at play for this. Uh, we're only going to find out once it goes to court and when the trial begins, what they're going to actually start, you know, pushing for at that point. Because if it goes to court, then I believe that the the fighters are going to push for a lot more because they'll feel that the judge is on the side already. He's clearly said that he's got, got to go to trial. He's not accepting that. That settlement, so that that already alludes that the 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 judge in the case is sort of leaning towards the fighters already. The Dana White is in a lot of trouble that I can't imagine the UFC are very happy with him. Uh, Mark Hunt has been saying for a long time now that expect it to go to court. Well, he's right. He's been right. Everyone's been writing him off, saying he's a madman. He said it was going to court, and he is going to court now. Mark Hunt has also alleged a lot of different things, saying that Dana White could possibly face jail time. I think that's the, the, the things that he's accused Dana White of, they're not going to be tried in this case. This is to do more with contracts and uh, the UFC using a monopoly play to uh, undervalue fighters that were probably worth a lot more and keep them in contract. So we'll only find out in time how that plays out. But... The Mark Hunt's case is a lot more serious and that, if if it ever goes to trial, he said it's going to be a RICO case. Mark Hunt, he kind of went off on you on Twitter he yesterday. Went off on me. He's always going off on me. Yeah, I know, it's nothing new, but like, uh, any particular reason this time is regarding the hell? Yeah. Listen, sometimes you got to protect these guys from themselves and that's what we're looking into right now. And when we do, he, he, you know, he made a statement that, that I've hated him forever. I don't hate Mark Hunt at all. I never hated Mark Hunt. He knows that. I was actually really good to Mark Hunt. Um, so that case is completely separate, the RICO case. Whether that will go to trial, whether there's enough evidence there to build a case is completely different. But this is just an antitrust lawsuit. So don't get them confused with what Mark Hunt is spouting, the two different sides. He's bleared the lines a little bit because he talks about the antitrust lawsuits as well. So the the two different the, the antitrust antitrust lawsuits and the RICO case are completely different matters. Uh, the RICO case is more speculation. The antitrust lawsuit is definitely going to add, and it is definitely going to happen this year. Uh, so like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.